Welcome to the Trading Lounge and uh, here we're looking at the US 30 and uh, we've got an impulse wave up from the 144 low here um, so it's the one the two the three there's a little wave four here developing at the moment so there'll be a wave five through here once that's uh, once that new high comes in here the fifth wave then we'll see the A the B the C um, and essentially looking for support back on the on the midpoint here the 500 uh the 14,500 and then uh because we've got five waves here we should be seeing more uh structure to the upside uh here so uh positive um times ahead so uh yeah looking for um Thursday and Friday and Monday really to be to be up so we'll be looking to be on the on the long side for our uh our um, CFD robo trading, so to speak, and uh, of course the S&P 500 the the same as well. I haven't just count, I haven't put it in here yet, but basically the one, the two, this is the three here. Um, a bit tr tricky to count it on the um, on the CFDs and the futures market because of the the uh, extended hours, but uh, a little bit easier on the on the cash market. But because we trade this, we need to look at this. Um, so look, what we can look at here is. Um, the uh, the midpoint here has got got been tested as support, so that's that's good. So any trade setup would come from uh, the sixteen fifteen sixty through here. So expect you know some maybe to hit the fifteen. This both the Dow and the S and P five hundred have got will be facing their own old highs. There's other highs over here as well. Um, so you know they'll come off in the A, the B, and the C here, and then find support here. So basically, just building in in through that. But I do suggest that um, you know wait waiting through here. But however, if the six fifteen sixty five, the beginning of Group Two, Group Two is sixty five seventy two and eighty, and you'll see those come in play. But uh, look, support on top of that, you just continue. If that wasn't going to correct through here. Not that it's going to be a large correction. I'd, I'd imagine that um, the 1556 would be sort of the the low point of it. Maybe even 1558. Um, you know, the norm is a 61.8% uh, retracement level from from there to there back in into this area here. So you know, and that's the sort of block of supply there as well. So that's where the um, 1555 the the support for that would be. So look, 1556. 55 is where it could possibly come to but let's just see how it uh, unfolds across this uh, 1560 here uh, in three in three sort of waves here and then look for support you can get in earlier of course as well uh, just know your numbers work the even numbers there the the the, uh, the six and the eight would be the best numbers to, to work on the long side there uh, the European markets uh, same but different this is the DAX here so you know kind of expecting this to to drop down further a little bit like the Australian market as well but look if they're going to follow uh tag along with the uh, US market then we need to you know look for support so if the uh 79 uh, becomes the support here then that would be the basis at the moment it's resistance you don't want to take that because you're just facing unnecessary exposure and the name of the game is to uh, get all the probabilities on your side um, so yep first high above the level then the retest so the retest is more important wait for that once you feel comfortable with that then you can just build a trade in on the 79 or 79.5 79 79.10 would be the strongest number in that little area then on the 20 then on the 30 if support is found on the 30 then you're pretty much going to be guaranteed to get to the 50 um, and then obviously there'll be corrective patterns through there as well um, and that's the same with the FTSE as well we can find that there somewhere yeah so support better better trade here better number here because um, if you're already sort of poking head up above the uh, 64 here so the idea is just to wait for a little while until you've got support a small position here building on this is with this is a good thing about group one you can build in on the long side through here and support on top of here and it can take a little while like you've noticed here it's it's um it found resistance pushed up through it came back and checked it 
but it didn't didn't grab it as support. It normally mucks around to the to the twenty as well, so it normally builds on here. So let's see how it builds this time around, which uh, which it should do because if we're expecting the S and P five hundred to move further up uh, over the next sort of three days, well, f well, Wednesday is a bit of a V shaped day, so you can have a, a lower morning and a higher close at the end of the day. Thursday is the bear day. Friday. Uh, if Thursday was down on low volume, then Friday will be up and that follow through will come in on Monday and there'll be profit taking on Tuesday morning. So that would be the cycle. So you sort of line that up with the wave count and the levels. The Australian market, we're looking at... Um, we were looking at this being a uh, a corrective wave through here um, and then having another further move down here. But we, can, we did get five waves here, the one, two, three, four, and five here. So an A and a B and maybe the C wave into here, that would work quite well. The one, two, three, four, five for the C wave. So moving up here. So we can still have an A and a B and a C wave coming back up here um, and then, then coming down. But uh, look, if the US markets are going to push up, then you'd use the midpoint here, the 49.50 as support. So it would need to get up there and sit on there, you know. So um, that's what you need to do. Uh, yeah. So um, let's have a look at the uh, commodities. Okay, this is uh, copper here. And um, look, quite simply is that if this low gets taken out here, yeah, and uh, the market moves down through here, then we've got a bearish, uh, a larger bearish pattern unfolding, and that would be the uh, the A wave to here, the A, the B, and the C wave uh, into here somewhere, and um, completing into here, then then moving up from that point. This whole uh, pattern here is is a um, is, is a corrective rally um, as it stands at the moment. If that low there stays in place, then we need to look at this as the A wave to here uh, in in brackets, then a smaller A B wave to here, and there is five waves in here. So we would have to put this uh, would have to put this C wave into here. It's a little bit small, but. If that low stays in there and support is found on the 345 there, five is the second strongest number in the market. So it's like a little midpoint between the 40 and the 50 here. It's a balance line through here. So the support here is, is important. And you can see that um, like sound petering out, you've got this sort of triangle pattern uh, diminishing into this particular number here. So this is support or resistance uh, given a little bit more time will give us the next direction. Uh, if it is support, then we'll see the 350 um, uh, touched on. Uh, if it becomes resistance, then we'll see a bumpy ride down through here. So this will really dictate the support for the material sector, the support for the BHP's low, lows at the moment, be it New York or be it uh, Australia. Um, and the other markets will be, you know, the, the the FMGs and the Atlas and all the rest of it will be all amongst that as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, so that that's that. So that's a nice little line in the sand that um, that we can work with to be long or short, uh, perhaps uh, tomorrow. Um, so um, the the oil market is 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 uh, pretty much sort of on track. Yesterday we were talking about um, counting five waves up from this particular low through here. And um, we yeah, the market had popped up through there and pulled back here. And I just felt that it actually had one more little fifth wave to move up through there. And, and that's coming nicely at the moment. So um, normally the, the 96.50, which is a bit of a sub-level, um, always seems to play a strong role in in oil so um that 96.50 there we'll see how that um uh how that pans out but there is a reasonably nice wave count so this would be up for one and back for two here and then the third wave has got five waves in it would be the one the two the three and the four into here and the fifth here so it's the top of the third here then we've got the fourth and this is where we're up to yesterday, and there's probably one more little push here, and it looks, it's quite a strong push, obviously, um, but it will have five waves as well, the one, the two, 
the third wave up into here, the fourth to here and the fifth to here. So that fifth wave in there will have five waves as well. So look, if support is found on top of uh, group one in this case, which would be 96.30, then that 96.50 will be uh, will be will be touched on. But we, um, we 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 have to expect some type of correction either across the 95 or the 96.50. Uh, so once that trend here rebalances through here, and we get a corrective pattern, then we can move in uh, long there again. But the idea here was really to get support on 93 and get to 95. That was the sort of trade there. And now we're in the later stages of the trend. Um, so we just need to wait for a larger uh, corrective pattern to to unfold through here. So um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. And that will obviously follow stock up as well. So um, you know, as we're expecting the S and P 500 to push higher over the next uh, around to Monday, then that will be the case here as well. So um, it's certainly to the upside there. So uh, the the gold market has sort of sunk under the uh, under the uh, 1600 here, and um, I mentioned in the in in the text part of the report this morning for gold and silver that. Um, you know, we've got a slight sort of retest here, which is good. So, so I guess um, you know, if there's if there's a a, a breakthrough you know, in some sort of uh, shape or form uh, in this particular case here, um, if there's a if there's a breakthrough of this trend line here, then you can go short on that and put the stop up there. But don't overdo it because. Um, you know, it's not it's not a strong retest at this stage. It's just the first just the first one. But um, you know, if you say if you normally trade th three contracts, well then scale in with one. Uh, if you do thirty, then ten, and so forth. So just keep it really small. Um, and if the ninety five, it's just the five second strongest number. If that becomes the resistance, then you can add under there and also add under the ninety as well. And we'll see uh, this move down. So um, we're looking for a top, but the Elliott count uh, uh, don't worry about this little count at the moment but uh, the Elliott count was this is a, a wave four here um, and a move further up and that does count from three waves here an A and a B and a C wave here then this would be up for wave one um, and back for wave two here and then further to the upside there. So if support is found on the 1600, like it's got to move up through there, come back and sit on it, and then draw a line across the top and then uh, trade in from there as well. So uh, just breaking the levels down a little bit. So if you're using the 1600 here, you could use 16. 03 because 3 is always the group 1 so support on 3 would get you to 5 support on 5 would get you to 8 or 10 so that's what you're sort of looking for there um, support on the 10 then we're looking um, higher up there because it's really getting into the supply zone at that stage there so um, look a breaking of this would create the short support back onto the 15 uh, 1600 there uh, starts to create the long so 1603 a retested support on 1603 you have to obviously get into the five minute chart to have a look at that um, or smaller whatever you use um, but uh, get a bit of detail on that there and that would be the same for <clears throat> silver as well um, silver's making a bit of an effort here to um, find the 28 72 is the resistance there so if that's the case you need to put a stop above above here if the 65 becomes the retested resistance as well here then you would add to that there you could cover into into uh 2850 here i normally if i'm into day trading <clears throat> i don't quite trade to the numbers so i would be trading down if i was trading down i'd trade to the 53 um number because i know that's where the the orders are coming in from so um yeah, uh, always the same, one, two, and three, then the five, then the eight. Um, and I like trading between the numbers five and three, either up or down, or eight down to five, or five up to eight, uh, if, if day trading. I don't normally trade into the one, two, and three. Um, right, okay, let's have a look at FX. Okay, the uh, US dollar here, and... A little bit tricky because of the spike here, but I'm in in an odd way. I'm just kind of um, uh, ignoring it in a sense because it does give us a, uh, a a better wave count in terms of 
up for one and back for two, the three, the four and the five here. So we're looking for wave one high here. And once we've got that in play here, then we'll be looking for an A and a B and a C to make up wave two here. Um, that, that could come back to the 82.50 as well. Just got to be mindful of that. But um, uh, let's just see how we go. We're not that in, you don't need to be that interested in, in, in it just yet. But uh, certainly some type of uh, corrective pattern across the 83 and then developing support on the 83 here. Once that's occurred, then we should see further upside there. So the euro's really got to go through its little ABC as well through here, um, and then it'll have further downside. So um, yeah, and this push up through here might place a bit of pressure on commodities as well. So those short trades on the, on the gold and the silver that's why I kind of mentioned them as well. Uh, so anyway, and, and the and the and the copper as well. So we'll see how that goes. But first of all, this this time need time needs to be spent here. So a little bit more vibration here, which does sort of it's get, that will help um, when looking at the euro here because. Uh, we know the euro has shallow retracement levels, but as you can see within here, all the um, uh, all, all the toing and froing with the Cyprus situation is is uh, is creating pretty choppy sort of price action. But that little that little move there uh, is corrective. Um, obviously, this is uh, corrective as well, but I can't make heads or tails of that. It's not that sort of uh, clean through there. So it does. It, it's a little bit tricky for me to work out what's going to happen. It could quite easily. Um, it's it's still got downside to go um, as the. Uh, US dollars vibrating across 83 there, it'd be good to pull that apart, you know, on a sort of five or 10 minute chart and, and, and have a look at the, 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 the corrective pattern across, across there. Um, look, in, in, it's quite, this, this can certainly have a little spike down here and then retest back up through here, okay, in three waves. So it can go down here, then back up in three waves and then down through here. So it's going to be a bit complicated and messy for a while, so don't lose money. You're probably better off standing aside until the uh, US dollar index has got a clear clear path um, as such across that um, that 83 there and, and found support on that. So just be a little bit sort of careful uh, uh, here at, at, at the moment. Um, yeah, okay. Um, the... the uh, the Australian dollar. Um, we talked about the bigger picture, and there's 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 a couple of different you know there's a couple of different ways to, to count all of this up here, and um, and and I've seen most of them, and and it, it it doesn't really matter that much just yet because, as I mentioned in the um, in in the bigger picture. Uh, the other day is that you know we we do have an impulse wave up here whichever way you count uh, this is a triangle through here or an ABC to here and up for one and back for two and up for three and we're getting overlapping wave structures in here which is um, see there's no there's no overlapping wave structures within these structures here so they're nice and powerful um, triangles only occur in fourth wave so it's quite possible it is a nice triangle um, we've got overlapping wave structures here. So we, because of wave four here, overlapping wave structure, we know that the trend itself is, you know, there's a big, there's a, there's a beginning, there's a middle and there's an end. And, and it, it is ending in its own way. And there will be some type of correction. I've got it back down here to the, to the wave four, one lesser degree here, but that may not be the case. It, it may just pan out across the top here, depending when we, when we do find the top in, uh, through here, but uh, one way or another, there's going to be some type of uh, ABC correction. And what we're looking for in the bigger picture to trade along is the support on the 105 here. We want to see some type of correction here, and then we want to see support, and then we can go in and trade for the long term here. Um, but it's not there yet. It's going to take to take time to develop. Uh, so in looking at this here, in fact, this this wave five could be in, in here already at this top here. But uh, while it's above the the 72 there, then we can expect further highs uh, in this area here. This can be counted in different ways through here. The point is, is that, yes, they are impulsive. They are up to, they, they are up to the upside. Um, yeah, so 
I mean, even this one here can just be the one, the two to here, the third wave here, the fourth wave here, pulling back to the fourth wave, one lesser degree, and then the fifth wave up through here. So, look, it's not going to go very far. That's the other point. It's not going to go very far. There will be a correction across here. It's, it's you know, it, it's... Um, you know, the, the safest place, to, I can only speak for myself, but I, I would trade to a particular number and then get out and wait for the correction. Whatever money that that, that, um, that was given to you by the trading gods can certainly take it back at um, in, in the corrective phase. And, and the, the, the problem with, with trading is that uh, if you do make money in a trend, you become attached uh, to that particular market and you end up, that attachment gives, you end up, giving it back in the correction. So look, try and, uh, try, try and do your best to, uh, to hold off through here. Let's just see what develops in here and, uh, and we'll try and get our timing right for, uh, for, for the next move up, which should be a nice long-term trade to the upside. Right, um, well, that's that. Um, so look, just, just sort of recapping a little bit. If we're on track with the S&P 500, then um, we'll see uh, the Wednesday today um, closing high at the end of the day, Thursday a bear day. That will be the correction occurring across the 14,500 for the Dow Jones. And then the, if, if that's on, on, low, on low volume, if Thursday's a uh, Bear day on, on on low volume, then then there's a then there's um you know reasonable possibility that the Friday and the Monday will be to to the up to the up days, and they're the ones that um that uh, that we want to catch. So, uh yeah, alrighty, well um that's about it. So, good morning and good luck.